The events you're about to see and hear are true. Real cops, real cases, real criminals. Stories told by the cops who lived them and will remember them the rest of their lives. Top Cops. I grew up in this town, Belen, New Mexico, and I joined the police force in May of 1975. I'd always talked to my dad about being a police officer. I don't know why, but I wanted to be one from the beginning. My dad worked for the railroad most of his life, but he had always told us he respected police officers, and he thought it took a special person to be one. After I joined the police department, my younger brother joined the New Mexico State Police, and my older brother joined the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department. All of a sudden, we had covered every agency, city, county, and state. Belen's a quiet bedroom community, a suburb of Albuquerque, with about 8,000 people. We have our police units assigned to us. It's called a take-home policy. Mine needed some repairs. I was scheduled for duty later, so I advised our assistant chief, Ernie Montano, and he followed me over. What'd he say? Well, he says to come back in a couple of hours. Where do you want to go? I don't know. I don't have anything planned. I'm going on patrol. You want to come along? Yeah, sure. Why not? First, we grab a coffee. You buy. <laughs> Sounds good. My job gave me both, personal satisfaction and a nice life. I hadn't been married to my wife, Marianne, all that long, but we had two beautiful little girls. So things were good. I never thought much about being in danger or what my family would do if anything serious had ever happened to me. Jewelers Barry Brighton and his dad, Paul, were looking after several customers that afternoon. So they didn't pay much attention to the three people who came into their store. The man was Frank Cruz, a convicted felon and a drug addict who had been in and out of the New Mexico State Penitentiary and was just now coming off parole. The woman was Roberta Aguilar, Cruz's girlfriend, also a drug user. They were both high on heroin. Hello. The boy was a relative who had gone for a ride with him that day. Let me see those earrings. Uh, the emerald cut diamonds? Yeah. Uh, Roberta, you like those? Sure. These are a very expensive item, sir. Glad to hear it. Everybody, this is a stick up! Not again. Let your folder, nobody gets hurt. Take what you want, no one's interfering. It's damn right. What are you down on the yeah. floor, face down? I don't know. Your hands in the back. Please, it's okay, she works here. Get down to the ground! Listen to the bus, Tommy! Dip her out! No. Right, everybody. Keep still. We do our job. We're out of here. I'm clogged. Right. Listen up, everybody. Nobody move for ten minutes. Come on, hurry. Let's get out of here. There was a lot of initial confusion, but someone reported to Robert quickly. In this kind of a situation, time is vital. Luckily, Ernie and I were only four blocks away at the garage, where we had come to check my car. Well, it can't be any longer than that. i got to go on shift in an hour. All units in the vicinity of Maine and Baca, armed robbery in progress at Valencia Jewelry. Proceed with extreme caution. Repeat, armed robbery in progress, Maine and Baca. Denny! There's another armed robbery at Valencia Jewelry. I gotta go. All right, I'll come with you. Let's go. Did she say if anybody's hurt? No. Yeah, this is what, the second time? When was it, July they got hit before? Yeah, it's getting to be a habit. Look at me, no uniform. I don't even have a gun. You got your ID? Yeah, yeah. There's a gun in the glove box, my backup. What the hell is this? Five shot charter on 38. You got a problem with that? This is a pop gun. What if I have to use it? You'll use it. Well, maybe I can just wave it around and scare somebody, huh? <laughs> While Ernie Montano and I were heading for the scene and making nervous jokes about the gun, the suspects were having some troubles of their own. Oh, 
Okay, take this top and get going. I'll try and get this heat moving. Go on, I'll catch up with you later. Best thing to do was get the woman with the stuff. so intent on getting the woman with a kind of a tunnel vision focus I might have seen Cruz in the parking lot I wouldn't have been caught off guard but there he was with a gun to my head everything started to slow down drop your gun or I'll blow your head off people say that when you get into a situation like this it seems like a dream it felt like that to me a lot of things flashed before my eyes my kids and everybody I wasn't about to give up my gun I thought if you're going to make a move, make it now. Because I'm not going with him, and I'm not going to give up my gun or the prisoner. Then he caught the gun. Let's get go! I know I couldn't take any chances, especially with a kid who was probably scared out of his mind and might do something stupid. I had seen the gun in his hand, and from a distance, it looked like a mean weapon. All I had was this five-shot pistol, and I had already used two rounds. I figured the kid would be looking for me at the wall right in front of him. If I could slip away to the end of the wall and get a good angle on him, I knew I'd stand a better chance of taking him. Police, drop the gun now! Drop it! I really didn't want to shoot him. I could see he was just a kid, but he was still a kid who could easily kill me. Kid. Drop it. Please. Put your hands behind your head. Keep them there. You're under arrest. You understand? Now don't move. Larry, come on. Come on. Nice going, Danny. Sending someone down. They need the gun for ballistics. When they're through with it, can I have it? You said it was a pop gun. Are you kidding? That thing saved my life.
Later on, Barry Brighton told me that if they had gotten away with the jewelry, it would have finished the business. After having been robbed a couple of months earlier, their insurance would have not covered the loss, which was over $100,000. And there they are, all these years later, still going strong.